not over. Come to the skull. against the Absolute. I must subdue him, or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my fall deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. attempts to be subtle, the Mind Flayer's awareness is everywhere. You blunder in its presence like a warg pup learning to walk. You must be joking. Look around you. We are at war. Fight with me. Your future depends on it. Fool! Without me.
wrong fight, friend. Not over. Come to the skull.
ally. We are in danger. The Githyanki is the source of our protection against the Absolute. I must subdue him, or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my form deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. Help me. You saved the Asuma Night Song from her soul cage. Your continued existence as yourself and not a mind flayer should be all the proof.
for the fallen. Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. And so we should swoon and offer a kiss, abomination? Ah, I would not even know where to plant it. Attached to a mere disguise, but you judge without even knowing me. It's like I said before, I'm just like you. An adventurer, I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune 
to meet Duke Stelmay. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield, the largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while, until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' his mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' his mother left, Usurper took her place. Blacketh declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Blacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince, and if they had succeeded, I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. A very good question. One that I have been unable to answer. That Orpheus lives at all is ruinous to Blackith. She has done everything in her power to keep his existence a secret. That Gortash and the Chosen found out about it. This is impossible to explain. But it was important enough to them that Gortash sent me to retrieve it. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside. And found Orpheus. I realized what the prison was for. Containment. While my body was within the prison's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. You are already more a lithid than you realize. It has improved you. 
You seek to reverse an inevitable process. A process of evolution. When I first escaped from the Elder Brain, I too railed against the change. But the longer I have inhabited this form, the more it has grown on me. Even if my original body remained intact after I transformed, I would not return to it. Doing so would only impose limitations. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent Alithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. I understand. Let us hope then that your present self will be sufficient to deal with three gods of death and a giant magically enhanced Elder Brain. But in case you change your mind... Look after it. Use it when you're ready to evolve. You or your allies. It has vitality enough for you all. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. Wits and blades always sharp. Still breathing, despite everything. So, there's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something?
primordial parasite communes with Lysel's. Her heart races as she learns of the events inside the astral prism. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. The tainted blood of the mother. The traitor prince. The Laxerai. And even more powerful still. It said he could bring a thousand Githyanki to their knees with one command. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Lacketh. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Yes. Our current Queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is, Gith's renegade spawn. A gay thrall who would return us to our slavers. He convinced his own mother's honor guard to join a coup against Vlakith I. He would have fed our empire to the Illithids had he succeeded. It was Kithrak Vos himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the traitor's with us, controlled by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would hand Vlakith's dominion to his geich masters. The astral plane would be first to fall. The others would soon follow. We find a way to enter the prism and slay Orpheus. He is a geich puppet cloaked in Githyanki skin. One word from his scheming lips and the people would doubt. Two words and they would rage. Three words and they would bow to the false prince. The Githyanki would be slaves once more. And one by one, the plains would fall to the geich. Be honest. What do you think of the new look? Well, I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now. On one hand, they seem useful. But on the other hand, oh perhaps tentacle before long. We know where they're coming from, and what lies at the end of that path. I never expected Ceramorphosis to be tempting. I think we should resist these powers. There's simply too many unknowns for us to risk it. It's been known to happen. Of course. Not sure what to feel. My parents are alive, and I need to save them. I'm lucky to have you by my side. I don't think I could face what's to come otherwise. Did you want something? If not, I'm perfectly happy to just gaze upon your while.
Don't touch me. What am I to do? We must find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves, and take their nether stones. Watching gods. But I never thought I would be happy to see this city again. <laughs> Much less to smell it. The Harper safe house I spoke of is on the bridge at Worm's Crossing. Danthelon's dancing axe. Information. The Chosen have a head start on us. We'd like to know what they've done with it. You think me lonely? <laughs> in truth, I prefer travel in a small pack such as this. Unburdened by numbers, we're free to act rather than react. A little like the old days. With allies, every bit as peculiar. Give or take a few tadpoles. Would you? In time, then. Perhaps once you found a rocking chair for me to doze off in. Worms Crossing. The welcome mat of Boulder's Gate. This is it. I'm almost home.
We both know what it is capable of, but I'm not touching it. That was before I knew the cost. Before I knew it meant transforming into some grotesque beast. I remember how it hurt when I turned into a vampire. My body writhed and warped while I was utterly helpless. The grip of death owned my heart as it beat its last. I, I don't want to turn into anything else. I can't do that again. I can't watch my body be taken over. I am not. I just don't want to lose my God's given good looks, really. Wouldn't that be a crime? Thank you. Worms crossing. We could be inside the city walls before long. And I could be back where this all started. I hope so. So long as I'm willing to stroll right into the Mother Superior's trap, they have no reason to not tell me where to go. If by warm you perhaps mean a flaming arrow, I doubt they'll attack in public. No, I expect they'll point me in the right direction so I can face my reckoning away from prying eyes. Not quite. Above all else, protecting our base of operations in Baldur's Gate was the reason I had to surrender my memories to begin with. Or at least, that's what I was led to believe. We should look for someone to point me in the right direction. Otherwise, we'll have little recourse but to wander the whole city searching. I know what you mean. And under different circumstances, I'd like that too. But first things first, I'm afraid. Worms Crossing is a choke point. If I wanted to intercept a new arrival, I'd find somewhere before the bridge, blend in amongst the crowds and wait. Most people seeking entry to the city will be refugees. I'd look wherever they're gathering. <laughs> 